Are you ready to celebrate Christmas? We are still in the season of Advent, which is the time of waiting and preparing for the coming of Christ into the world. The word waiting in the Bible is never just simply about being patient. It's about much more than that. It's about preparing and seeking and getting ready to celebrate that little baby born in a manger in Bethlehem. You know, we're not going to have to wait much longer. Christmas is almost here. It's a busy time of the year. There is so much to do. There's a Christmas tree to put up. There's decorating to do. We want to add some lights. Of course, we want to put some ornaments on. And then we want to hang a wreath or two. We want to listen to some Christmas music. And there's holiday baking. There are cookies to decorate. Maybe you'll take a family picture. There are gifts to buy. There are Christmas cards to write. The list goes on and on. But wait, does anyone see the baby anymore? What happened? We were so busy getting ready to celebrate Christmas that we forgot about Jesus. He's all covered up by the details. He is completely hidden. But if we stop, if we just stop and think about each one of the things that we were doing to get ready for Christmas, they all point to Jesus. The tree, the evergreen tree, We traditionally use evergreen trees. They do not lose their color or their leaves. That reminds us of the everlasting, never failing love of God. We can always count on his mercy and his grace. Whatever happens in our lives, he is there. The lights, the lights that we enjoy, all different colors, all different sizes, all different shapes, they remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. And we listen to Christmas music. And we ring bells. And they all remind us of praising God. And we think of the shepherds who were visited by the angels in their field while they were watching sheep. The angels brought the news of the Savior. They said, he's been born. Psalm 100 says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. And then we have wreaths, the circular shape, the evergreen material, they represent eternal life. It's a circle. It's a no beginning and no end. It represents the unending love of God. These Christmas cards, oh, we love to get Christmas cards. We love to hear from people who live many miles away. It shows us that we still care about them and they still care about us. Some 2,000 years ago, God sent his son Jesus to become one of us so that we would know of his love for us. And in that sense, baby Jesus was like a living Christmas card. That card expressed God's love for us, but he is so much more than that. That little Jesus who was born in Bethlehem and whose birth we celebrate at this time of the year is the one who would give his own life for us so that you and I can become a part of God's family. And then, you know, we have all those special smells that go along with this time of the year. There's the smell of pine, trees, roping, wreaths. They all remind us of the beauty of the season and God's everlasting love. The smell of vanilla, the baking of cookies and cakes, pies. They all remind us that we are all part of the family of God. The smell of peppermint. Think of the candy cane. If you hold it up, 
upside down, it looks like a J. You turn it over, it represents the shepherd's staff. And then there's the smell of cinnamon. It makes us feel warm all over, like the love of God. But then stop for a moment and imagine the smell of the hay. The smell of the animals, maybe a cow, a sheep, a donkey. Imagine the birthplace of Jesus, a damp barn or a cave. And then we add the smell of the newborn baby. This baby wasn't born in a king's castle. He was born in a small village of Bethlehem, the child of a peasant woman, wrapped in swaddling cloths and laid in a manger. So the next time that you smell cinnamon or pine or gingerbread, think also of the hay and the livestock. What a contrast, what a Christ. And then we think about the gifts. They look so wonderful under the tree. They're all different shapes and all different sizes, wrapped in all different kinds of paper. You never know what's inside. You can shake them, might give you a clue, or you can squeeze the gift and that might give you a clue but you really don't know what's inside until you open it. But no matter what is inside of that box or inside of that bag, nothing, nothing at all could be better than the gift that God gave us. Baby Jesus was the gift that God sent us. Just imagine this baby Jesus came to earth to walk with us and to teach us about God. And then he gave up his life for us to forgive our sins. That's the best gift ever. Our Bible verse for the week is John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You know, we're getting ready to celebrate Christmas, the coming to earth of God's son. But we can't celebrate Christmas without also celebrating Easter. They are like two sides of the same celebration, the celebration of God's love for us through Jesus Christ. The Bible, this book right here, has a lot to say about the word love. It tells us how much God loves us. It tells us that God wants us to love him. It tells you to love your neighbor. There is so much in the Bible about love that some people call it a love letter from God. A long time ago when Jesus was on earth, people thought the Bible was just about rules. Do this, don't do that, say this, wear that, go here, worship there, rule after rule after rule. There was not very much about love, but there were just so many rules that people cared about. But when Jesus came, love was all that he cared about. He came here to show us how much he loves us. And he loved us so much that he was willing to die for our sins so that we could live with him forever. There were a whole bunch of people who really liked Jesus' message of love. But there were also a whole bunch of people who really liked the rules. They thought that following the rules was all that mattered. And they forgot that everyone makes mistakes and everyone disobeys rules. And when that happens, what then? Is that it? One broken rule and it's all over? No way. Jesus came so that when we make mistakes, he can save us. It's such an amazing way to show just how much he does love us. That's what Christmas is all about. It's about Jesus. It's about God's love for us. And as we hear the Christmas story, we hear of God's promises from a long, long, long time ago coming true. God did send his own son from heaven to rule the earth and to bring hope and peace. A young unmarried girl named Mary lived in the town of Nazareth. She loved God with all of her heart. She was kind and good. And God sent the angel Gabriel to tell Mary that she was to be the promised savior's mother. Don't be frightened, Gabriel said. You are special and God has chosen you. God's Holy Spirit will touch you and you will have a baby boy who will be the promised one. 
the promised one that people have been waiting for. You will call him Jesus. Mary replied and said, I will do everything that God wants me to do. Joseph, the carpenter, also lived in the town of Nazareth. And one night God sent an angel to visit him and to tell him that the baby that Mary was expecting was the promised son of God. He was still to go ahead and marry Mary. She had been chosen to be a part of God's wonderful plan to be the mother of the savior of the world. His name was to be called Jesus. The emperor Augustus wanted more tax money. He made a new law that everyone was to go to the town of their ancestors and to put their names on a list. So Joseph the carpenter and Mary had to go to Bethlehem. It took about three days for them to get there. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. That's right. That night in Bethlehem, Jesus, the promised savior was born. Joseph and Mary called the baby Jesus, just like the angel Gabriel had told them. They wrapped him in soft cloths and made him a bed in the manger. On the night that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, there were some shepherds who were staying in the fields nearby watching their sheep. They watched those sheep to make sure that they were safe. It was getting late, but suddenly the whole sky was filled with a very bright light and the glory of God shone all around them. The shepherds were very frightened. But then an angel appeared to the shepherds and he spoke to them and said, don't be frightened. When you hear the good news that I have been sent to tell you, your hearts will be filled with joy. In Bethlehem today, the Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord, and he is God's gift to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths, lying in the manger. And then the night sky was filled with hundreds more angels who were praising and thanking God, saying, glory to God in heaven. May the whole world be filled with peace and kindness towards others. The shepherds hurried to Bethlehem, and there they found Mary, Joseph, and the baby, just like the angel said. And after they left the stable, the shepherds told everyone that they met about their visit to the stable, about finding Mary and Joseph and the baby, the Savior that promised Messiah, at Christmas, we remember God's gift. It's God's gift to us. And we light the Advent candles to remember. We light one to remember hope. Jesus is our hope. He died on the cross to save us and give us everlasting life. The light of hope shines in the darkness and the darkness has never put it out. We light the candle of peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. His peace rules in our hearts. And it reaches out to friends, to strangers, and brings justice to our world. The third candle is the candle of joy, also known as the shepherd's candle. We remember the angel's message to the shepherds. We remember the message of joy. Today's candle that we light is the message of love. Jesus is our love. He is with us always. He loves us unconditionally. He loves us unconditionally through every event in our life, in birth and in death, in joy and in sorrow. Let's close with prayer. Dear God, thank you that you love us so much. You love us even when we turn away from you. Thank you for sending us your son, Jesus. Jesus shows us how to live lives of love. Help us to be aware of your love and to be willing to share it with others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.